Welcome back to the Ghost Key. I am Gray, and today we're gonna do our well, what's probably gonna be our last Finnish Cup match. Um, uh, next up is FC Lati, as you see here, and in truth, <clears throat> uh, they're a Premier Division side, so chances are they'll likely beat us. I did take a look at their um, at their players, just kind of scattered them out a little bit, and we have a couple players that are about as good as theirs, but. For the most part, we're all uh, we're all under par, I guess is the best way to say it. Um, we are carrying an injury, if you remember from the last video. Omar Rabi got hurt and tore the knee ligaments and is out for two to three months. Really sucks. Um, basically, there goes you know 110 per week we're paying him. Um, injuries like that in this game tend to really put you back a little bit. Um, I mean, I guess it's realistic. They do kind of put you back in, you know, real life, you know what I mean? So we're going to have to deal with that for a while now. Um, I did sign, I did manage to sign a couple other players on non-contracts. Um, if I can remember who they were, because I haven't played this in a couple days, honestly. Or not not this one, I've been playing my own, but, you know, I showed you Harala. We have Daniel Feldman, who I picked up also as a, as a wing, another wing player. Um, that might be it, actually. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's it. But anyhow, um, now i got to figure out who we were going to start in here. But let's go to, let's go to tactics here so I can see everyone's position. But, um... Oh yeah, we're gonna move over Heightenen, I think. Oops, no, stop that. And then who is gonna play in the middle? Uh, Hinkula. Yeah, I think that's who I had in there. Who I was going to play in there anyway. But anyhow, um, I'm not gonna just go out there and put our worst team possible out. Um, I am gonna give it a go. But uh, like I said don't expect too much i really don't think we're gonna we're gonna win this match um also if i sound a little quiet i am trying something new with the audio and all that stuff so like i said a while ago now um i kind of like to experiment with stuff and whatnot so you know we're just gonna go ahead and and, and um you know roll with it uh i think that's pretty much it i think that's all we need to do to go get ready for this match so we're just gonna go jump right into it. Um, like I said, I don't expect to win. Um, they're a much much better team than we are. So I mean, just all all across the board they are. So I'm not really, you know, I don't really have high hopes. So um, you know, that's that's pretty much it. It it'll it'll be okay though in the long run because it'll give us a chance to. To concentrate on the um, the the league, which is really what we want to do, um, you know. But it's it's gonna still gonna suck. I mean, you always want at least a chance to to increase your reputation, at least within your your country and all that stuff. So this will obviously not really rob us of that chance, but you know, it'll obviously, you know, give us a chance to you know lose this and then move on and lighten our fixture list and like i said hopefully then you know that'll work out and then we can we can really concentrate on winning this league and getting to the premier division so um which i think will increase our reputation within the game a little bit quicker than winning the cup we're the favorites here holy shit how are we the favorites yeah this this thing this is the this is the 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 assistant's co the assistant coach's advice. If he's saying that, then I, what the hell's the press saying? It's fucking weird. But anyway, let's let's go ahead and uh, I don't know. I'll go with the assertive. Uh, that's that's kind of how I am. I mean, you know, they didn't have a total totally bad reaction to it. So I mean. I don't know. Maybe we will win. I mean, I, I, I didn't think we were favored unless they're feeling a, a, a significantly weaker squad than they should be. Um, I wouldn't think so, though. A game usually doesn't do shit like that. Sometimes it does, but usually it 
doesn't. I mean, you don't really get that lucky, honestly. Oh, shit, I about dropped my fucking mouse. And, um... The game usually doesn't do stuff like that. They usually, you know, whoa. That's one of the things that's like, that, um... That you'll see, you'll see us have some trouble with later. Um... Since, uh, since I said, uh, our, our player policy is we're going to buy young and, and sell usually in their prime, which means we're going to buy, you know, 16, 18 year olds, somewhere around in there, and then sell them when they're, you know, 24 to 28, somewhere around in there. Theoretically, that's the idea anyhow. Um, and the reason being is because, you know, they go for a lot more money then, and, um, you know, I, I just prefer the, the development phase and it's cheaper to bring players in once again. I mean it's just it's just a financial thing. And I like having players that, you know, you bring in and play free for a long time. Um, I'm not really into players that just kind of uh, you know, moonlight through your squad and, and your club and go on to bigger and better things. Um we will have some trouble with that though because some of the um some of the kids will want to move on. It's kind of weird, like you know, they like a you know we're we're a lower side theoretically, reputation wise and and division wise and all that shit. And so bigger clubs like you know Man City, Man United, whatever, will come in and try and poach our youngsters like we do um, to other clubs. However, the thing is though, what happens is when they start doing that, I did figure out how to keep the kids though but when they start doing that then the kids want to move on and try and force a move through in the game which to me doesn't make sense especially when you have uh you have you're, you're you're in a good situation like if you play players especially through those developmental years which are the most usually the most crucial years i mean if you don't know anything about football i mean really when you're 18 to 20 you know or 21 23 right around in there you want to be playing regular football um and this club, my clubs, always offer that to those kids of those age ranges. I mean, that's just, once again, my transfer policy. So there's always going to be players of that age range, and they're always going to have opportunities to be full-time, you know, consistent starters. You know, whereas if they force that move to a place like Man City, well, then typically they're not going to be good enough to be playing there full-time. So they're just going to end up being on loan. Now when our club gets better obviously and we have access to champions league football and this is one thing i wish they would kind of change in the game i think they should make champions league football mean a little bit more because supposedly in the real world that means a hell of a lot you know i mean if if you are into the transfer news and, and read anything in, on football at all i mean that seems to be one of the big things about moving to a bigger club is being in the champions league and playing champions league football all the time and once our club gets to the point, because that's also one of the reasons why I choose a lower division like this, it's easier to win, and with a much lower talent level, you can you can win your league and get into the Champions League consistently. And once again, if they want Champions League football, they want to get in there and they want to get to the group stages and play those Champions League games against the best clubs in the world and test themselves, and they have an opportunity to do that all the time, then you know you should be a little more content you know, and it to me that seems better being able to play at a lower division side whatever that has consistent access to champions league football is a little bit more fortuitous to a younger player oh my god really that's fucking bullshit oh jesus anyway as i was saying i'm not too upset about it i mean it's i i'm not happy with the way that happened but it, that's probably going to be the way it fucking works, too. Is we're going to fucking lose like that on some bullshit, cheap, fucking... And anyway, I'll stop fucking getting all mad about it. But, um, to me being at a, you know, maybe not as big of a club or a popular club, but having access to Champions League football consistently, you know, and playing time through your developmental years is probably a bit of a better place for a kid you know 18 to 23 or so to be then going to man city and not being good enough to get into the first 11 and thusly being loaned out and playing in the second or third tier of england i mean 
to me, I mean, you know, Champions League football or you're playing League Cup matches in a lesser league in England, to me it sounds better to be playing Champions League football. But, you know, like I said, that's one thing I wish they would change in in the game, and that's one thing that our club will provide to younger players. But, I mean, that's like I said, that's just kind of a byproduct of the way I do my transfer business. You know, and the you know the club, the clubs, the leagues that I decided to take up residence in. Um, I have done some like slightly bigger leagues. You know, I have uh, managed on FM12. I managed in the top division in Germany for a while, and that was fun. Um, that was that was that was quite a bit of fun actually. I had a nice little run in there and. But, you know, it's it's just one of those things where then there's some other club, though, that comes along that I really want to be a part of. And, you know, like some little small club that I like I like to play around with. And that's something, too. I like, I like taking a small club like this and, you know, building them from the ground up. That's something that I really like a lot of. I mean, it, you know, if you're not really in the mood to, to put in, you know, a shit ton of work, you know, then obviously, you know, you don't have to put, pick up a league like ACL Lu or something like that. Although, like I said, I'd, Finland isn't too bad. Like I said, it, it gives you pretty easy access to the Champions League money, which, you know, um, I chose this league more so because it'd be a little, it'd be a little quicker to to get up. I mean, if I thought about choosing Denmark because the, their Danish Premier Division would be a lot more, a lot tougher challenge, it would be a lot more interesting. Um, However, like I said, it was going to take us a lot longer to be consistent and to win consistently in there and to get the players to dominate that because we'd be unable to dominate it early. So, um, and also, uh, I, I believe, in my honest opinion, um, in this in this iteration of Football Manager, even though like, even though you can have players that are a hell of a lot better than your competition, um, oh Jesus. Even though you can have better players that are have a lot better than your competition's players, you know they your competition can still play pretty well. I mean, I I don't, you know, on my Galway team, I mean we're pretty good, but um, you know they're they're not going out there and, and winning like six nothing, seven nothing every match. It's still you know one to, to three goals, and that's about it. You know sometimes it'll blow up, but you know sometimes it won't. Yeah, that was pretty disappointing. Hopefully we can get a goal back here because... See, this is one thing that I don't like about this game. Like, you, you try to motivate them like that. One of two things happens. You come back and you really put the screws to the opposition. Or you come back and you just... The game gets blown open and you lose by five goals. It's, it's pretty irritating. You know, it's like, oh, go out there and fucking... Don't play like shit this time, guys. And then, you know, they just fucking get worse. And it always gives you false hope when it does do that, too. Because, like, the first five minutes of the match, you know, or the first five minutes of the second half, you know, you go out there and play pretty well. And you're like, oh, all right, we might get that goal back and and draw a level. And then, like I said, then they just start scoring like it's nothing. This is one, one thing you're starting to see here, too, is the players aren't, uh, there's not as, Good enough movement off the ball, right there in that circumstance. We were able to hold the ball up, up here with the, with the striker, but nobody moved around him on the flanks or through the middle of the pitch. You know, like he's just standing there right now and reacting to the ball instead of you know creating opportunities by you know moving around. Um, those are things that will come obviously in time as the formation gets better, and obviously the players are better. I mean, you should see my my Galway team. I mean, they're not. They're not world class or anything like that yet. They're just, you know, good enough to win in the Champions League uh, knockout stages and then pretty much get knocked out there when they start playing the better teams in Europe. But, um. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Not really. I'm not really all that, uh. Oh, Jesus. Not really all that pleased with the way this has gone. But I mean, like, in truth, I mean, you know, losing, losing 1-0, I guess, is respectable. I mean, like I said, I'm, I don't like, I don't know how we're 
expected to be. This is going to be a goal for them. Oh, Jesus. I don't know how we were expected to win win this match. But, um, you know, I mean, I think going out at the stage is all right. I mean, I'm not too upset. I don't really... It doesn't really matter too much to me. Um, like I said, I'd, I'd, I'd prefer to kind of go out against the quality side and put in a respectable performance so that we can... Um, just focus on the league. So like I said, that's where we won't really want to be. Oof. Yeah, it was too sharp of, of an angle. And this is something too, like I said, I mean, I, I looked at... Oof. I looked at their... Their, their players, and they really, uh... You know, they're really a lot better than ours. And this, like, once again, I mean, this just goes to show how, um, let's see, what are you, oh, it just goes to show how, um, how level things really are, you know, in, in the game, which, like I said, I mean, I'm, I, I like a lot, because, I mean, it gives you, it gives you, once again, a chance to win these games against, you know, sides that are just a little bit, you know, better than, than we are. Although, like I said, the goal itself, I didn't wasn't too pleased about. I hate that shit. Hate stupid little mistake goals like that. Those irritate me. I have not been paying attention to this. I've been talking too much. But yeah, there's just not enough. There's not enough. Oh Jesus! There's not enough movement in uh, in midfield right now. We're kind of stagnant. There's lots of room in there though. I mean, there's lots of lots of areas where players can get the ball, but oh sorry. But you do start seeing some of the things where they're just a little bit faster, a little bit stronger, things like that. Here and there when they're chasing down the ball and shit like that. Oh, no, clear it. Jesus. No, I'm not pretty sure a goal isn't coming here. I mean I'd be I'd be surprised if we scored. We haven't really been all that um Creatively, yeah, like I said, right about here, look where everyone's just kind of standing around, not doing anything. You know, he had the, he had the wing back up here, but you know, and then you just pass shit like that around. Now this is a nice spot, though. Oh, Jesus! No, oh, why couldn't you keep it in? Oops, that's not what I want. I want. I want this. Really, cat? You have to go over there and fucking make all sorts of fucking noise while I'm trying to record. Always, always when I'm recording. Thank you, thank you for leaving, cat, fucker. But um, yeah. See it, and uh, and one thing too. Oh, I shit. I do need to go do that. I just remember. Oh, Jesus. I just remembered. I gotta go. I gotta go do. Uh, I gotta go put our, our um, uh, set pieces and shit together. I keep forgetting to do that. Um, one one thing I've noticed is kind of hard. Like it's it's not really that easy to score on with set pieces in in this game. I mean, the second one was a little bit, a little bit better. Mm, it was a little easier to score, but not not this one for some reason. It seems to me. It seems to be one of those things that's it's just easier to score in open play. Sorry that, or I just haven't figured out how to make you know a quality, a quality uh, attacking set piece. Defensively, we seem to do pretty well. Seem to anyway. But of course, there's always that that breakdown after the ball gets headed out or something like that, where you know everyone's kind of scrambling and shit to figure out you know what to do and where to go. And here's where nope. I was gonna say, and here's where the offensive move just blows up and breaks down. There's a lot of yellow cards in this match so far, though. You can get three of them. Oh, Jesus. Good block, though. Now, see, if they would have scored on something like that, like an actual attacking move, instead of our goalkeeper going out to fucking get it and just missing completely, 
I, I wouldn't be upset about the way the fucking goal is. I mean, it's... I'd be fine with it. No, Jesus. No, yeah, you see things like that, like those fine things where the pass, you know, just isn't isn't good enough to get there. That's where they're better. And that's where we, I mean, obviously you need to get better players and to develop. And, and, and like I said, in time, you know, this formation will solve a lot of those things because of the way it works, you know, and and stuff. So, I mean, and the movement and, and the understanding will be will be there. And it'll be quicker, too. I don't know if you noticed, but, you know, whenever we have the ball and stuff like that, it's it's a pretty slow formation, How you know, when the offense kind of gets going. And they takes a while to figure out everything. I mean, it's... Like I said, once once they train and, and get more familiar with the formation, then then things should work out. You know, things should be quicker. Um, that's one thing I had a lot of trouble with when I started playing this game. I mean, it's, it's just when the, the game would just be so, like, the offense would just be so slow. I mean, it would just, like, bog down and, you know, no one would ever, like, just turn on the jets and just, you know, move. And there's one of the passes right there with with the three um you know with the two attacking or midfielders and the striker that move right there that just happened where he sends the ball across you know as as that left back moves in you know our winger continues down this channel and and occupies his space over here and then when that ball comes in over here he's wide open that's something you'll see a lot more of as they get better with the formation one of those plays where they cross the field of play and and find the open man You'll see a lot of that, and actually have one one winger that's scoring a lot of goals from that position. Um, the other one, not so much, but he's a little bit he's a little bit not as much of a scorer as as the one who's scoring goals. Obviously, it makes sense, right? And there's just bad first touch and turns the ball over, and that will probably be pretty much it here. I don't, I don't suspect we'll get any more offensive moves coming through. And that's something, yeah, that's, um, oh, I keep wanting to mention this, but I keep forgetting it. Um, I, I did end up selling a player, and it was Mykonen or Mytonen or something like that. There you go, there's that right there. Ooh, that's, like I said, that's the play. that You're going to see a lot of that as they get better. You know, and that, was, that should have been a goal. That was good effort. Hell of a one-time shot there, too, on the volley. That was That was worth the price of admission right there. But um, like I said, um, you know, I'm not too worried about that going forward. It's, but anyway, like I was saying about that, I I sold the player. I didn't I didn't sell the player. He uh, his his uh, he was on a pre contract or whatever. Or when when we started, I just forgot to mention it. And you may have seen him in like the first match or something like that. And I think after that he was gone. He was a center back. But anyway, that's that's the end of our match. Um, bit disappointing, but like I said, um, good learning experience, especially with this being the way that it is. You know, with uh, us being the um, the the favorite, um, when you lose games, especially a game like this, it's a good learning opportunity. Kind of lights a fire under the ass of the players because if you don't have matches like this where you you're expected to win and then you lose. Um, you, you it's it's easy for the players to get really complacent and not play very well ever and really play down to the opposition's level which obviously you don't want but um you know and and also uh one of the things that you that you really like to see is having having those games like that when you're ahead in the table you know when you're 10 points ahead and you lose to you know the bottom team in the league and i don't know why it does this it, these don't pop up until you mouse over them it's fucking weird but anyway um that's that's that we're out of the finish cup now um like i said I, that's not something i'm really worried about i think this is a uh a, a competition will come around to winning um in a few years in a few seasons probably three four because by then we will probably have enough players to juggle you know the domestic cup and the the um league so uh but anyway, um, I think
think uh, I think that about does it for this episode. If you made it this far on YouTube, you know what to do. Thanks a lot for watching. And remember, the ghost key is the only place where pants are optional.